Hi guys, I'm the Little Scientist and today we're going to talk about germs. So I can't see all of you all, but I'm trying to see you. If you can see me, give me a thumbs up. You can see me? Awesome. If you can hear me, give me another thumbs up. Awesome. Okay, so listen, do you guys know about this funny thing we're calling COVID-19? Have you guys heard about that? Yeah? This is why we can't go outside to summer camp and play with our friends and things like that. It's making things really, really difficult for us to do what we like to do. I know for me, it's making me a little uncomfortable and make things a little difficult. Like I can't go with my friends. I can't go travel or hang out outside. Does anybody else have anything that they can't do right now because of this thing called COVID? What about you, science guys? Well, we can't do our summer camps and go to school in a couple of weeks, and that's no fun. Yeah, how about you, Boston Museum of Industry? Yeah, we can't have anyone visit the museum. It's been really sad. Our doors have been closed since March. Yeah, that's a bummer, huh? It sure is. Yeah, that sucks. So, you know, having a germ makes things difficult, just in general. But this germ that we're calling COVID-19 is a really, really difficult germ. And it's because it is something that is spreading really fast and really wide. It's all over the world right now. It's not just here in Maryland, it's everywhere. So we're all being inconvenienced. Did you know there are different kinds, different kinds of germs? Usually, when we talk about germs, we think about bacteria or viruses. Those are the two big ones we talk about all the time. Do you know what COVID-19 is? Is it a bacteria or is it a virus? If you think that COVID-19 is a bacteria, put your left thumb up. Okay, hands down. If you think that COVID-19 is a virus, put your right thumb up. And parents, if you can hear me, you can join in on the fun too. Okay, hands down. If you guessed that COVID-19 is a virus, you were right. Give yourselves a clap. Now, let's talk about why germs are bad. So germs are bad because they can make us sick, obviously, but do you know how they make us sick? It's because they contain things like proteins that give them the tools to build other things that make us feel bad. We have proteins too. We have proteins all over our body and they help us do things. But proteins are what we call multifunctional. Do you know what multifunctional means? Multifunctional means that they can do many different things at the same time. Some proteins help us build things that help us do things that are good, and sometimes proteins help things do things that are bad, like germs. So keep this in mind as we move forward in the conversation. Let's talk about how we come in contact with germs. Have you ever seen someone go like this <coughs> and cough without covering their mouths? What about like this and wipe their nose with their hand like that? Have you seen that happen? Ew, that's yucky, isn't it? That's not good hygiene. This is why it's important to wash your hands because people don't pay attention to the germs they're spreading and then they might cough on their hands or their nose with their hands and then touch something that you might touch every day. They could touch things like a marker and say, hey, can I borrow your marker? And then you borrow it and now you have the germs in your hands. They could open a door after coughing or rubbing their nose and now you unlock the door or open the door with your hands and now you have the germs on your hands. And then maybe later on in the day, when you're not paying attention, you might, you know, your, your nose might itch and you scratch it or your eye might itch and you rub it because your hands are in your face sometimes. And that's how we get exposed to germs. So it's really important to wash your hands, right? Now, what happens when you don't have soap and water to wash your hands? Because you use soap and water, right? You go in the bathroom and you wash, 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 soap and water, rinse it off, dry them off, and you're all done. But what happens if there's no soap and water around? What do you use? Hand sanitizer, good job. So it's important 
that even when you don't have soap and water around, that you use hand sanitizer. Now, how do you know which one to use? Let's talk about it. And here's where our experiment comes in. I told you before that proteins are the reason why some germs can make us really sick. What soap and water does is soap has, hi Sherry, I see you washing, you wash your hands before like this? That's right, like just like this. So when you wash your hands with soap, soap denatures or breaks down the proteins. When proteins are broken, they can't work anymore. And if you're a germ and your proteins don't work, then you can't make anybody sick. If you don't have soap and water, we use things like hand sanitizer. You might see them like this, the little pocket ones that mom might have in her purse. You might see something like this with the pump on it that the teacher might have in the classroom. Or you may even carry one of these in your backpack. Well, you can spray it and just spray on your hands. So why does that work? Well, what we know to happen is when you buy a hand sanitizer, the main ingredient is alcohol. Do you know what alcohol is? Let's talk about it. Alcohol also denatures proteins and it does the job without using soap and water. So you can just spray a little hand sanitizer on your hands like this, or you can pump it on your hands and rub them together really, really well, and then the proteins won't work anymore. And if the germs don't have proteins, they can't make you sick. Now, the key to this is understanding how strong does your hand sanitizer have to be? Let's talk about it. So, I have in my cup some egg whites. Can you see my egg whites? Egg whites are protein. I also have four cups. And they're full of alcohol, which is the active ingredient or the main ingredient in hand sanitizer. The first one has 80% alcohol. The second one is a little bit weaker and it has 70% alcohol. The third one is a little bit weaker than that and has 60% alcohol. And our last one is the weakest one of all. It has 50% alcohol. So, let's see which hand sanitizer works the best. I'm gonna pour a little bit of our protein, which is our egg white, into the 80% alcohol. And I'm gonna stir it around really good. Can you see what's happening? Look at that. The egg whites turned white, didn't they? That means the proteins are broken. They can't work anymore. And if they can't work, they can't make you sick. Now, let's move on to our 70% alcohol solution. This is a weaker hand sanitizer. So we pour a little bit more of our protein in there. And we're gonna stir it around. Look at that, it turned white again. That means this hand sanitizer works also. Now, let's do two more. We're gonna do our 60% and we're gonna do our 50% sanitizer. Pour in our protein and give it a stir. Look at that. 60% hand sanitizer also works. Here's our last one. All right, in goes our protein. Stir, 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 look at that. Now I want you to compare these two cups. This is 50% and 60%. 50% and 70%. And then our strongest one, 50% to 80%. Do you see the difference? The takeaway message here is hand sanitizers are great for breaking down proteins. They're excellent at stopping germs, especially when the active ingredient is at least 60%. If you go to the store and your hand sanitizer doesn't say at least 60%, then you can be assured that it's not as effective as other hand sanitizers, and you probably don't want to buy it. How do you know what it has? Ask your parents, of course. 
you look at the back of the label and it'll tell you. So I have one that has 70% alcohol. I have one that has 80% alcohol. I have another one that has 68% alcohol. And that's how you know how to choose the right hand sanitizer. Now, when in doubt, always wash your hands with soap and water. But today's lesson is when you choose a hand sanitizer, always make sure it has at least 60% alcohol to make sure that you denature all the proteins, break them down really good, and stop it from making you sick. And that's how you choose a good hand sanitizer. Now, if you enjoyed that and watch it what happened, give me a thumbs up. Awesome. One more thing, if your parents are listening, I do this kind of stuff all the time. And so do the science guys. We're always doing science. If you want to reach me, you can find me on Amazon or Barnes & Noble. I wrote this book just for kids like you so that you can understand science a little better. It's also available on e-readers. So if you have a Kindle or a Nook, you can read it there too. And there's also a fun experiment in the back. And it's summertime. You can do it outside or inside with your parents. See you later. Thanks for watching.